how do I get that model complexion makeup look that I see in magazines or what on this side is called an editorial look. So I'm going to show you guys today. You really want to prep the skin first. This is incredibly important for any makeup look, but especially this makeup look. So one of the products that I love to use is this herbivore rose water with coconut in it. It's incredibly hydrating and leaves kind of a sleek sheen across the face. I love that it finally mists onto the skin. And I like to use this not just as a prepping product for my foundation or makeup, but also for my skincare routine. I use this after I put all my moisturizers on to kind of lock in hydration. And you can also use it to soften any pigments that are sitting on the surface of the skin. For instance, powders. Powders, no matter how well you buff them into the skin, kind of sit on the surface. So when you use a hydrating mist, it really does help to soften the look of that powder or anything that's dry. So once we put on the hydrating mist, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my patches from PTR. Now these are the 24 karat golds and these are the hydrogel eye patches. These are great for getting circulation going. So for those of you with deeper set lines or fine lines, this is what I'd head towards, any fine line. I also love to use these on clients as a first step when I am putting on their eye makeup. Now, normally I do eyes first and then foundation. That way if there's any fallout, it just goes on the eye patches and then I can peel these right off. It makes it a lot easier. While we're hydrating underneath the eye, I'm gonna grab my Chantecai Rose Glow Face Tint. I talk about this all the time. It's one of my favorite products. It is great for hydration. It's my primer. And it's kind of like a skincare primer in one. It's lightweight, it doesn't have that thick dimethicone silicone kind of feel to it, which I like. So just nice and hydrating, gives a good glow. Feels really fresh. Kind of cooling as well on the skin, which is nice. And give this about five minutes to kind of soak into the skin and let these eye patches do their job and then I'll go in with my foundation products. Now I'm a big believer in these illuminating sticks. Chanel has the Balm Essential and Westman Atelier has her lit up sticks. These are so incredibly good for prepping the skin, for adding a natural highlight on top of the foundation, or for going back in after your makeup's all done, including powder, and putting a little bit on the palm of your hand, warming it up and pressing it all over the skin to kind of make everything come into a beautiful, dewy, luminous complexion. So I like to do this to not only myself, but to clients. Put this all over here. Now feel free to take your hands and rub it in. I'm gonna to use today my Sonia Kaushik makeup sponge. I love the way this is angled. I got this at Target, I think it was like $5. It's one of my favorite sponges. I go between these and the Real Techniques. My lips are feeling really dry right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Chanel Balm Essential Stick. This is in the color Ore and hydrate my lips. This is a multi-purpose stick, so you can use it everywhere. I just love the way it makes the lips look fuller and juicier. It has micro shimmers in it, so it gives the appearance of a fuller, plumper lip. Okay, nice and hydrated. We have a nice glisten going here with the Westman Atelier, and this is in the color Nectar. It's got a little bit of peach to it. If you guys wanna see a full video on a lot of Westman Atelier products, I'll link that in the description box because I have been a huge fan of hers from the beginning. Now we don't want a lot of product for this look. In fact, we want maybe one pump. That is it. Any extra will be with the concealer, like if we need to touch up purples and blues, dark spots, freckles, acne, etc. I like to warm it up a bit. As you can see, look how far this spreads out. There's a lot of foundation in one pump, so truly less is more. That's the one thing I say I see consistently go wrong when it comes to makeup application. It's the number one thing I've seen over my 25 year career, hands down. So I'm taking a little bit of foundation on my ring finger and I'm just gonna start placing it more towards the center of the face because that's where we have a lot of discoloration. But concentrating on the center of the face and whatever's left over, I put on the outer area. As you can see, it's not as much product. I will flip over my Sonia Kaushik Beauty Sponge. 
and just tap it into the skin. Now the whole idea of this look, and please feel free, and I recommend looking at a magazine and that skin that you're seeing that looks so beautiful is this technique, which is making you think that the model just happens to have the best skin. Not so, there is a whole process to making the skin look like it's not wearing any makeup and that's just how the model looks. No, there are several steps and that's what you're seeing right now. And I have done hundreds of editorial looks and this is by far the most requested look I get from people because most people wanna look like what they see in magazines and see on models and celebrities. All right, something important to mention as well. Do you see how you still see a little bit of my color through here? There's some purple through here. There's my dark spot. Here's my red spot. Here's a dark spot here and here. That's okay. You want that to be part of the skin look here because we're gonna go in with a concealer and lightly touch it up, but we don't wanna go crazy thick mask-like makeup with this type of look because it's supposed to catch light naturally so that when you turn your head, light bounces off in a very subtle fashion. Now this look will get you compliments on your skin, which is what you want. That's how you will know you're doing it right. Because people will say, you have such beautiful skin. They hardly will say, your makeup is so nice. What foundation are you wearing? Because the idea here is that your skin is the star of the show. And, and the illusion is, is that you're not wearing any makeup. All right, concealer. Using my Charlotte Tilbury. And we're just gonna do a couple little dots. Then we'll brighten where there's some redness. And out here as well. Now, I need to be careful because this concealer is lovely around the eyes because it's brightening and even around where there's some redness. But once you get into brown colors or spots, age spots, let's say purple or pink with acne and even freckling, you can make it look gray if you're not careful. So the dark spots out here are not too bad because I use retinol and vitamin C to keep them light. But for those of you who have a true like birthmark, dark spot of any kind or discoloration, if you're not careful, you take your concealer that you use here and here and put it on top, it literally will turn an ash color. So what can you do to prevent that? I'm gonna do another video showing you guys how to truly color correct different areas of the face because most of the time, if you have true discoloration, you can't use the same concealer throughout your face. But for today, we're gonna go ahead and fake it a bit for these little dark spots out here. As you can see, I'm just using my finger because your fingers have heat and oil. It helps to soften those pigments onto these little spots out here. Hopefully you see the difference between the two eyes and hopefully you see the difference between the brightness on this side compared to this side. Now, for those of you that are new, I am French artistry trained, which means less is more. You want the skin to have some realness to it. So it's okay if there's some color showing through a little bit. You want to be able to look at the beauty of your features and your skin, not be like a mask. I'm gonna use my Gucci powder. You guys know how much I love this powder. And it's a matte powder, and I am combination dry. But this powder is so finely milled and light in texture that it really comes down to how I apply it rather than the consistency. Now, here's a really quick example. A lot of people go, well, of course you can make drugstore makeup look good. Now, mind you, I don't use drugstore makeup as often as luxury makeup because I kind of feel like why make it harder on myself? It's wonderful that luxury products already have an emollient base to them and it's well formulated and they have micro shimmers. There's just more attention to detail in luxury products most of the time. Now, drugstore products I find are usually a bit drier and a bit more aging because of their dry factor. But if you prep with the right skincare and you know how to apply your products in a lighter hand, that's why most artists, 
which you will get there, I promise with practice, are able to use a $5 drugstore blush compared to an Hermes $100 blush because of how they are prepping their skin and how they're applying the product. So there is my makeup artist tip for you all today. All right, so what you're gonna do is take a small brush. This is my Wayne Goss brush, and you're just gonna add a little powder here. And I am not swirling, I am not collapsing the brush. You just use the dome of the brush either to pick up a little bit, or my favorite is to softly press it on the angle part of the brush, but never swirling hard. If your brush ever splays out and, and goes flat and gets like a disc, it's all fanned out, it's not only not good for your brush, it's also gonna be terrible for your makeup look. All right, tapping a little bit of this off here and I'm just going to press it in the areas that I need it. So my pores, my nose, most of us it's just in that T-zone. But if it's not and you have oil all the way around, you're just gonna do the same technique that you see me doing right now. I like to put a little across my lids, brighten the lids, neutralize any discoloration softly. All right, so let's take a look at our cheek. Are we still having some sheen on the high points of the face, which would be here, 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 anywhere where the bone comes forward? So far, so good. You can still see this sheen through here. Just briefly, I want you guys to understand that on my channel, it's really important that you guys understand the why behind what I'm doing. That helps you guys to be able to process the information so that it's not just on the surface, but that you can really understand so that you can grow your skill set. And part of that is assessing your makeup. And that's why I stop between each step so that you could start to train your eye and understand the why we are doing what we are doing. All right, so completed the look. It's a bit bold now, but thin brows kind of rounded with my Charlotte Tilbury pencil. I quickly put on some Victoria Beckham Cajole eyeliner and cacao, some mascara, some blush with my NARS Orgasm palette, and then I put on my Red Louboutin lipstick. So this is a very bold look, obviously, because my brows are bold, my eyeliner's bold, my cheek is bold, my lips are bold. Now, how can I soften this? By just doing one thing. First, you're gonna take off the lipstick. And the goal is to find a color that works well with your surrounding colors. So since I'm wearing red, I wanna find something that has a little bit of color to it. It's so like a pink, a rose color, a raspberry color, as long as it has a red leaning hue to it. And it's okay if it's stained a little bit because it'll look pretty with the gloss that I'm about to put on top. I'm gonna take my Dior gloss. This is my favorite. I have several of these, but this is the one I love the most. And this is in the Rosewood. And these are the new lip plumping, minty, tingly glosses, which aren't my favorite feeling, but I just love the shine on these and they really do plump the lips. So I just deal with the tingle. Okay, so first of all, I don't believe in rules when it comes to makeup, especially when it comes to the creative process. I want you guys to use your canvas as a source of creative expression and joy, but there are certain techniques that do help your makeup look more polished, refined, or will help with certain features, bringing them out or even pulling them back. And so when it comes to, for instance, putting a lip gloss on that is similar in color to your surrounding colors, especially when you have the eyes being so bold will help to soften the look and create a nice unified look. Also, because this is very bold and matte, having a little luster on the lips really helps to just bring everything together. All right, everyone, we are done. I hope you enjoyed this video. At the very least, I hope you were entertained. If you guys like what you're seeing on here, I definitely pour my heart into this channel and you want to support the work that I do, then go ahead and don't forget to subscribe and use the affiliate links down below for anything you see on me today. And I have a list of stores that you can shop for absolutely anything. Every time you shop, I get a small commission and it helps me continue to share this education and artistry channel with you all. And if you don't want to purchase anything, if you go to the top where you see the heart, you can donate any amount to the channel that you wish. And do not forget, of course, to leave me a comment, hit the thumbs up. And lastly, if you guys want to book a one-on-one -on -one service with me, you can head to shrevoyage.com and we can go over an artistry education lesson via Zoom.
All right, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching and going on this voyage with me. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, continue to take care of you. Continue to take care of each other. Continue to be kind. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now, everybody.